guys, this is Aaron Hall from Sunrise Marine, just west of Destin, Florida. I'm going to go over some sa trailer safety tips for you today to ensure that your new toy is always ready to go. Alright, now what I'll start with now is going to be the coupler and the hitch of the truck itself. What you want to do is a visual inspection every time right before you go out to make sure that you have no frays, that your chains and your lines are all nice and clean. What you have right here are safety chains that are going to connect the boat to the trailer you have a auxiliary safety chain that you want to put on first. I generally put this hook on first and then cover it with the other chains. This is your last line of defense, so you want to make sure that it's safe and secure no matter what. So another fact that you need to look at is where your trailer hitch is at. If your ball is high enough for your trailer, it's not too low, not too high. And a lot of these, you, you can get these kind of hitches, or if you have more traditional, you can generally flip it to get an extra up or down. Not only does the hitch go on, you want to make sure that everything is moving nice and nice and smooth. And before you leave, just about every trailer is going to have this pin that's going to secure it on there to make sure there's no surprises. And you'll push that through there, and then you're good to go. You need to make sure, and this is going to vary by the trailer that you get, on what kind of connector that you're going to need. I have a long hitch here, so I have what they call a pigtail on my connector. Most trailers are moving to electric over hydraulic brakes, so you're going to make sure that you have the seven pin connector as opposed to the four or five flat connector like this. Basically, they connect on each other. And you want to make sure, you always want to inspect and make sure that they're not rusted through because that's going to lead to lights not working, it's going to lead to safety issues down the road. So you always want to kind of do a visual inspection before you leave. Put that on. Put that in there, your ball is down, your safety chain is on, your additional safety hook is on as well. You want to make sure that your chains have plenty of pull, that they're not too tight, that they're going to let you uh, turn, they're going to, not going to pull the trailer too tight, and they're not going to snap or put extra wear and tear on it. All the ends, there's no frays, any kind of rust, any, anywhere on the trailer that you see anything that might lead to more further wear and tear. Now another great thing to, to look out for and why you want plenty of play in your, in your, your safety chains and also your, your wires is you want to make sure that it's not anywhere where it's going to be cut off or put any undue stress to it. And that's just going to further the life of it and save you a lot of headache down the road. Also another thing to check for in just about every trailer is going to have what size ball that it has on it. Now you need to make sure you have the right size ball, the two inch or two and a half inch. Now moving on, you want to do a visual inspection every time before you leave. Anyway, you can see wires, make sure there's no frays, that everything's you know looking uniform. Before you take off, anytime you go, you want to make sure that your running lights are working and that your brake lights are working. What I do is I'll put the truck in park. I'll put my hazards on and then I'll walk to the back to make sure that both of my brake lights are working if I'm by myself. If you have somebody with you, if you're, you know, your children, your wife are going out there on the boat with you, involve them in the process and teach them about how to be safe out there so that they'll always know the rules as well. Now before you go, you always want to make sure that your bow hitch is tight, there's no play in it and that it's snug on the roller here. A little bit of play is not going to hurt too bad if you have a short trip, you know, but at the dock you might want to back back in and push it on a little closer if there is a little bit of room to it. But this, and there's always a safety chain on the front, you're going to make sure to, to tie that, put that down on it. Make sure that your strap is nice and tight, but make sure that there's no frays in that as well. Also, do another visual inspection. Just about everywhere on this trailer you want to look for wear and tear and rust. Make sure that your bolts are tight. Especially after a, lot, you know, a couple of years of using it, you might want to go through and just tighten up every bolt on it or you just look for loose bolts. When you're doing your inspection, you can usually see to the sides of it where all the wires run. Make sure all the connectors are nice and there's no kind of wear and tear. Make sure that they're out of the way to where they're not dragging on the ground. Almost all trailers will have these. This will be an additional tie down for the bow. So if you're making a long trip, say cross country, or if you're headed to a, a launch that's a little bit further away than you're used to, I always advise to put in a little additional bow strap there too, which gives you just more protection. Keeping on with your visual inspection is you want to look for anywhere that the bolts meet the trailer or that the trailer meets the boat. These are the bunks here. Now each boat is specific, each trailer is made for each boat. We do our own adjustments here at Sunrise Marine to go with each boat as it's bought and purchased. So you'll want to make sure that that bunk is sitting properly. 
making sure that it's snug and that they felt on it and that the cover of it is not uh, ripped, torn, showing exposed wood because that exposed wood and brand new shiny fiberglass did not go well together. Look on and if you look underneath here, generally where all the, the tires and the fender wells are, you want to do a good close inspection of your wires and, and go behind the fender and make sure there's nothing that's blocking it, nothing getting in the way. The running lights, the surface here, Always make sure that they're on and that'll be, once you turn your truck on, they should fire up. Another point and another thing that every boat owner knew used that you need to keep in mind is that these lug nuts on these tires need to be tightened about every 50 to 100 miles. Especially if you have a launch or a lift that's a long way away and you're going to be making that trip very frequently. It's safe to check them about every time if you know it's going to be a long trip. The tires are not balanced like your vehicle tires, so they tend, they tend to wobble. So when they wobble, it'll just loosen up. Brand new or used, it's going to come to the same thing. You need to, you need to take responsibility and tighten up your loads before you leave. Another thing to look for is look up underneath the fender well and, and those bolts as well. Generally, out of sight, people tend to forget about or check less often. But it's just as important and vital. This is your defense between your tire and the fender here. So this is the first step to making sure that there's no uh, nothing blocking it, impeding it, or stuck in the wheel well. But it's also uh, a place that you're going to want to wash down whenever you rinse your boat off. Now once you've done your visual inspection on the sides of the boat, it's time to move to the back. You've done it on the back. You check to make sure that your brake lights are working, that your reflectors are nice and they're nothing peeling, no damage there. What you want to do is, for long trips, and in Florida it's a state law, but it varies from state to state, so check with your state to make sure there's rear tie downs here. It's just another another line of defense to keeping your boat to your trailer here. You know, you poke your head down. If you're about to launch the boat into the water, it's a good time to actually check your boat plug as well. Alrighty, so you've done your visual inspection, you're tied down, you're ready to go. Now it's time to get to the nitty gritty of it. and. You don't have to do this every single trip, but it pays to do it about every other time. Just get yourself in the habit of looking at it. It's a good way to stay ahead of it. Is check your brake fluid reservoir. It just pops up right there, and you should be able to see brake fluid towards the top of it. That's making sure that it's ready to go and that it's giving you the ample amount of brake fluid to brake every time. All right, when purchasing your vehicle and figuring out which tow vehicle is correct for you or is going to do the job correctly and safely, you always want to look at and figure out your gross vehicle trailer weight and the towing capacity of your vehicle. Now, in order to do that, you're going to need to find one of two things. On the trailer here, and just about every trailer is placed somewhere in this vicinity, you're going to be able to see your gross vehicle weight there, telling you how much this trailer can handle all together with trailer. It's going to be able to tell you tire pressure for your tires. It's going to be able to tell you just about every vital piece of information you need to know about that trailer and how it's going to work with your tow vehicle. Now, when calculating which trailer is correct for your boat and which truck to pull that with, you need to calculate in how much that your boat is going to weigh or what size trailer that you actually need. A great way to do that would be to, you'll always need to add the weight of the boat with motors, to how much fuel it could be if it was full, and that you can average that to seven pounds per gallon of gasoline. If you have a fresh water reservoir, it's about eight pounds, of, eight pounds per gallon of water and any kind of gear and any other essentials that you're going to put on that boat. Now add those all together and that's going to be the total of what your trailer needs to handle. It needs to be above that. Once you find the correct GVWR for your trailer and for your boat, you're going to need to calculate tongue weight. It's a rule of thumb to never go over 6 to 7% of your tongue weight. If it's too high or too low, it's going to equal you not being in control of your boat on the trailer or even worse, you not being in control of your vehicle while you're pulling your trailer. And that's been my trailer talk with you, and I hope that I have imparted some knowledge for you and you can safely get out there on the road and to the ramp. This is Aaron Hall signing off from Sunrise Marine, and I hope to see you out there on the water.